Hello everybody, it is Caleb and I am finally getting around to showing you guys the video mapping on a previous software tutorial. This is kind of a generic tutorial because I'm using Rhino 5 for this because it comes with a 90 day free trial. There is a number of CAD softwares, more than I can mention, that, oh and by the way Rhino 6 is out if you wish to uh, check that out, but there are a number of CAD programs that you can use to complete this as long as they can make the object you want texture map it as one surface and then export that as a 3d studio file you're good in addition you can probably import this and use it in a different software than ma3d i'm going to be using ma3d but if you have luck in capture polar or vectorworks or a number of other ones please let me know because i'm curious to see if this will work i'm my expectations are it will though. Now if you're following along at home and are probably going to create something that I'm not creating, that's okay. The basic method to this, and I'm going to go over all of the tools in Rhino in a second for you to use, but if you just want to take off on your own, that's fine. Basically create a box in solid tools right here that is your desired output. You could get some funky outputs. Mine's going to be pretty low. And then enter your height. And then if you just created something that's not even a box, that's okay. Just go to rendered view and make sure you at least have a surface to map on. Because you need that white surface. The next step is and you can have multiple surfaces if you're about to duplicate this object into many different objects what I would do because you have to test this before you proceed what I would do is drop a test image of any kind on your surface and it will come out wrong but that's okay control C and control V to duplicate this surface around I would use the front view to do that to move it though. But if you drop the image on it beforehand, then all of the images will be on all of your components by the time you go to texture map it. If not, you have to drag an image to maybe 100 boxes if that's how much you created, which is a huge pain. Usually leads me to starting over. So once you have all of your boxes, what you want to do is go to standard and create the lines that you want to cut out of that piece of, of that box and once you have a solid clickable shape go to solid tools and wire cut or you could just type in wire cut and then select your output box as the surface to cut press enter cut death point make sure to cut it all the way through Part to cut away, yes. And I have two. That's strange. There we go. I had two boxes in there. And then once you have all of your pieces, uh, there's a 99% chance your unit does not look like this, but that's okay. Select all the components in your desired map and go to texture mapping. And if you don't see that here for whatever reason, you can go to render tools and find it here. But choose a mapping. These are kind of like lighting consoles. They all basically do the same thing. Some are a little more capable than others though. My favorite is planar mapping for 2D objects and 3D actually. You create the first corner of your map in one corner and then drag it to the other corner. And UV, UVW basically means XY or XYZ. Is this a 2D or 3D object? You can click on these, but I desire usually to type in U and hit enter just because it's fun. Then your object is mapped. Check the left right on it to make sure it's correct. And then once you do that, you can export it and just make sure you export it as a 3D studio file. Now I want to show you guys a couple more tools in Rhino if you're 
doing something totally different and are stuck because you don't know what to do. That's okay. Rhino's a little bit confusing. I would advise looking up the command list for Rhino because that could be super helpful. I probably need to take a refresher and it'll solve a couple mysteries about Rhino that I don't know. But my set is going to be a mid-stage and upstage video wall with holes cut out of it. I'm going to do the upstage first because I tried the mid-stage first last time and it didn't quite work. So these are the boxes that I wish to cut away from my upstage. We'll drop one there. Drop one there. The drummer has a big video wall. I don't want it to be symmetrical though. Now let me go over a couple tools because I forgot to go over that as usual. You saw me use this wire cut tool already. In solid tools this round hole tool gets used a lot. Extrude face to a boundary you might use if you're making something step related. Move face to a boundary I've used once but that's kind of unnecessary. Where is it? Cat planer holes is useful if you have made a couple two dimensional walls as your output or as a shape in your unit, but don't have a surface on it to map on. Don't have that white surface. And then there's a bunch of useful tools off to the side here, like box spheres, which you can wire cut in half and then. And surface tools drape something over to create a dome and then that's about all there is in solid tools and surface tools you might want to play with this surface from three or more corner points that's useful in addition to these two which basically do the same thing vertical plane is useful and easy to make I should actually be using that but whatever you don't have to use a three-dimensional object. You can use a two-dimensional. I just use three-dimensional because video walls are three-dimensional, obviously. Revolve, if you're doing a circular object, that's useful. Haven't played with these two. There's a lot I haven't played with. If you make something, feel free to share a picture somehow. If that works. Curve tools would be useful for cutting out curves or creating curves. And then in transform, you can scale an object. You can create text and map that. And then you can make basic shapes like polygons and rectangles, circles, triangles. And then that takes me to standard where you get your basic boxes, lines, I guess that's the same box. Ha ha ha. Look at that. Don't I look stupid? Okay, so the biggest tool in Rhino, though, is your grid snap. Right click that, go to settings. And if you're using video panels, it's very useful. I'm assuming my video panels are one foot, which they probably aren't, but this is hypothetical. But if you set your distance of this to exactly to your video panels then everything should map out perfectly from pre-visualization to your real video wall once it gets built. If all of a sudden you change video wall sizes you've got another issue but that is the grid snap. I have that on right now and you can toggle that on or off. So I have the lines that I'm going to cut out of my upstage video wall. Let's go ahead and cut those out now. Solid tools, wire cut, select cutting line, click, 
select objects to cut the wall, press enter, and just make sure that it is going all the way through the box. Unless you don't want it to go all the way through the box, you might want to create some riser steps or something. Enter to cut it away, and then if you want to repeat the command that you just did, you can right click and it will prompt you with the same command that you just did. Select that, select your box, cut away, done. Right click, select your line, select your box, enter, cut away, done. Rinse, lather, repeat. And then I would keep your lines just as reference in your uh, front view. You can delete those all at the end. I just like to delete them all at the end instead of halfway through. So what I'm going to do now is create a second box. And I would make this the actual distance, the actual stage distance. Although I think my units are screwed up, so I'm just going to approximate it. Okay, and then I can cut objects out of that. Carefully. It's going to be a little weird because this box is in the way. What I can do is select these. Then in my top view, drag those down stage leave the lines in place, drag this to that point, and then make boxes around that. And yay, it is landing on that line that I wanted. Just keep in mind that's my upstage. I just forgot that for a second. Oh, I don't want to make a box. I want to make a 2D box. Okay, now that I have that right click, oh, I have to select it again. Wire cut, select box, object. Okay, then grab these objects, 
move them back to the upstage where they belong. And then delete your lines. Once you have that done, you can see why I mentioned dragging a test object to your uh, object before you cut it or duplicate it because now I have to drag it to every object. But after you do that, go to Apply Planar Mapping Front to there, U, and as you can see, I only had one object selected, and that's why it didn't work. Oh, this is a UVW map. And then it's going to tell me, yeah, I got it. So that's cool. Then what I'm going to do, select all of this, file, export selected. Where is it? 3D Studio. And if you remember seeing this as you go to MA3D, then that's how you know you remember to switch it to a 3D Studio file. It's very easy to forget. And then you go to MA3D and wonder where your object is. And I'm not going to connect this to a media server today just for time's sake but I am going to drop a test image on there and I don't need a session going but let's go to import 3d model open Save it as the object you want. And once you save it, you can exit out and go to your media database and type in your object. Now notice the texture only comes through on one to start off with. You need to go to materials, bring this window up if, if you need a little bit. Select all of those, make sure you turn your emissive color up and diffuse color down. And then go to texture and you can go to local disk and import your texture or you can add a media server which I don't have any right now or you could just enter a test image and it is mapped if you send that to a media server it will work perfectly and then what you might want to do while you're here because I usually just don't do any other video wall elements but what you might want to do is duplicate your map set it back a bit and then increase the size just by well I guess you don't need to increase that size increase the size by a little bit and center it and then select all these emissive colors and take off the mapping on that one and then make this one dark and that's kind of your video wall frame housing and you're done. That should work perfectly. Well, it will work perfectly once you connect a media server to it. And that is all I have to show you guys today. In the future, I'm going to be making more videos just like this of 
other more unique shapes. I'm going to hopefully get to the point where I can create a light fixture in Rhino, but I might purchase another CAD software by then, or I might just purchase Rhino outright. So thank you for watching, everybody. If you have any questions or have success doing this totally outside of the parameters of what I just discussed, please let me know in the comments because I'm super excited to see what you guys come up with. So thank you for watching. Have safe gigs, protect your retinas, and I will hopefully talk to you next week. Goodbye.